I'm Danielle Judovitz, and you're watching Voice of the Heroes. Welcome to the Voice of the Heroes podcast. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, click that notification bell so you can be notified for upcoming videos and interviews on your favorite heroes from across the multiverse. And today we have a great episode. That's right. He's a part of a clan that's the strongest in the Hidden <laughs> Leaf. He's the captain of the 10th division that governs souls in the Soul Society. And <laughs> he is one of my idols in Naruto Shippuden. Neji, man. Welcome, Steve Staley. How are you doing today? Thank you. Welcome, wow, welcome. what a great introduction. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for joining us. Now, our co-host is my boy, Hidden Rose, my brother from another, and also Malo Uchiha, man. Let them know where they can find you at. What's up, guys? This is Hidden Rose. You can find me on YouTube at Hidden Rose. I also stream on Twitch, some anime reactions. That's Hidden underscore Rose. Go ahead and hit that uh, follow button. I'm Milo Uchiha. You can find me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Milo Uchiha. Some maybe Uchiha Milo, but that's how it go. He's too cool for school. Let's get into it. Steve, man, how you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm, I appreciate you joining us. Now, we have so many questions for you, but so little time. Let's basically get to know the person behind the iconic voice of Neji. And wow, Koshiro. okay. Tell us a little about yourself. Well, I um, was not necessarily planning on going into voiceovers when I moved to Hollywood to go to school. But when you're young and you know a lot of people who are trying to make it, right, everybody's got ideas and things. And a friend said, you want to take a voiceover class? And I said, okay, let's do it. And then it reminded me when I took it of all the fun I used to have when I was a kid recording on a tape recorder with me and my friends and interviewing our parents and joking around. And I was like, this is exactly like what me and John used to do. And so I could tell right away that it was I was good at it. And then I began the work of getting better at it and then meeting the people you have to meet in order to uh, get business done. Great, great. What was your gateway into the anime community? How did you, you know, obtain the role of Neji Huga? Kind of like what I just said about meeting the people you need to meet. At a certain point, um, you meet some people who say, okay, let me recommend you to somebody. And at the time, um, there was a studio called Animes, and I was recommended to them by a couple of people. Bridget, Mona Marshall, maybe, and um, went in audition and got parts. And then that's all it took, because once you're on that roster, then you meet everybody who says, oh, you need to know this guy. You, wait, you don't know Jamie? That that kind of thing when you're sitting in waiting rooms, and especially back in the day when we had to go to auditions no matter what it was for. So you your word just gets around. And then so Naruto was just a regular audition like any other. I mean, it was a big audition because they were casting all the parts. And, and again, it was still live casting. So you were there in a waiting room in an office building. And, um, you know, then you go in and give your audition. And the next thing you know, you're at work. So that's how it went from getting into dubbing specifically, meaning anime, really. And, um, and then Naruto specifically. Was you familiar with any of the material beforehand, before the um, audition? <laughs> Only, only I recognized the name, but that was it. No, I only knew the titles that I was part of or other stuff that was going on at the studios where I was working. I was aware of what that was or even had probably a little job on it, you know, here or there. But no, I didn't know anything about Naruto. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting because I wanted to ask you another question that kind of follows up to that. What's some of the techniques that you use to bring your character's emotions to life through your voice? Well, they tell you a lot about the character at the audition and then also at the recording session. And so you take all that in and then hopefully you've studied acting and you did plays and you, you do stuff that um, cultivates your talent so that when the director says all this stuff to you, you find meaning in it and then you just go for it and do, do your thing from the original when you're at work you also have the preview of the original to inform your performance 
So the answer to your question is both of those things are what come together to make the performance you're asking about. So I'm curious because it sounds like, you know, going into <clears throat> acting and different things like that, right? Um, you don't really know the series beforehand all the time, right? So my question right. to you is like, are you, what, what, like, what is your interest as far as like anime, comics, and just like, I guess, weeb culture in general? I would call you... that myself weeb culture adjacent because I'm definitely that person, mm -hmm. right? Star Wars, etc. cetera. Uh, but I, not, I don't pursue it. How's that? So yeah. I'm weeb culture adjacent. And then, of course... The other side of that same coin is I'm absolutely not weeb culture adjacent. I'm smack dab in the freaking in the middle of it. Yeah. Right, right. And so the, all of that stuff I'm very familiar with. And then, of okay. course, by going out to conventions and stuff like that, I, I see it and experience it. And so that uh, educates me as well. But okay. in um, in terms of being a fan myself, only what I'm a, a fan of. If that even makes sense. Yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah. that that's a great question because you're part of some of the most iconic animes of all time. Bleed, I know. Pokemon, Berserk, Gundam, Naruto. The list goes on and on and on. Are there any upcoming or ongoing animes you would like to tackle? Let me think about that. Mostly what I'm thinking about is... No, I'm not saying things I'm not supposed to say. Oh, you got some cooking. Oh, man. <laughs> man in There's the laboratory something cooking. Right now. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, you know, there's some remakes that are coming out that I'm working on, and those are fun because they're old titles that I recognize and was a part of even. And, um, and then I love getting to see these shows that I've never even heard of and would never have heard of just because I was the director of it. Like my favorite show ever is this is licorice recoil. I love mm. that show. You know, that show. No, nah, but it's I'm definitely going to check it out after this. You directed that. Uh, uh huh. And it's, I don't know what, I can't remember right now in the flurry of, uh, work. I'm lucky to have what, uh, where you can see it, but, um, Licorice spelled L Y C O R I C E, something like that. Licorice recoil. That's enough to get it to come up on Google. And I always thought that was a cool show. I can't explain why the visual, all of it, you know, the, the reason that anyone likes anime, some great exteriors. The characters were great. It was about teenage girls who were actually secret assassins, right? But only in oh, anime wow. you could get away with and make it even yeah. slightly believable and also not stupid. <laughs> so licorice, licorice recoil. That is not near the question you asked, but it's where we ended up. Yeah, definitely, heroes. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you check that out. I'll probably try to put some link in the description below because I'm definitely going to check it out. Oh, my! It's only like twelve episodes. I mean, maybe there's another season. You never know until until the phone rings. But um, man, was it cute! And the actresses were great. It was so girl heavy. And um, the I don't know the side plots didn't annoy me. I can't explain it. I love this licorice recoil. There you have it. Um, there's a bunch of um debates me and my supporters have, and one of those debates uh debates involve one character that you played, and that's Neji. And one thing that we never got to see was the end of the first two in his ends in Naruto. Are are you uh are you a big Naruto like? Uh, Naruto fan, like um, I know you played Naruto, but played in Naruto. Excuse me, like you know. Um, I mean, yes, I'm a fan because I've been put into it, right? And and so now I know about it, and it's cool. And I, of course, I understand everything that goes on around it. Um, do I sit down and say I'm gonna do Naruto this year and watch 700 episodes of Naruto? <laughs> no, because okay. I did already see it, and um uh. So to answer your question, I am a fan because of just being part of it has made me become a fan, right? But separate from that, I want to say not a fan because I came to this show 
I didn't know what it even was. So I came to it as an actor. I, so I never had any other thoughts about it other than what I was doing at the time when I was working on it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So then to be a fan of it separately, I can't, I can't separate it because I never knew about it before. So do you think Neji would have been able to beat Sasuke Uchiha in the Truly Museums? We never got to see the fight. No, we didn't. But I, I of course, I'm going to say I bet he could. <laughs> but that <laughs> that's what made would make that a great fight. And it's okay. true. That would have been an awesome, you know, piece of anime to see. Gone versus Byakugan. That's actually that leading up. Cool, yeah, you know? that's actually leading up to my um one of my questions. Your favorite fight scene in Naruto because Naruto is iconic for their fights in all of anime. They have. It's like neck to neck with Dragon Ball Z when it comes to the fighting scenes in anime. Oh my god, so, it's a blur. Yeah, so who do you what do you think is your favorite fight in the Naruto franchise that you happen to see? It's in a in a stadium in my in my recollection. What what good fight was in a stadium? Oh, oh wait, I did was two fights for 13 years. I don't remember. You talking what about the fight I'm talking about? Yeah. The, um, well, the it, it would have been there. It would have been there. It would have been there. Sasuke versus Naruto. I will, um, Sasuke versus Neji. It would have been there. But um, yeah, I just remember stadium and and getting my ass kicked, and because also at, even yeah, playing the, the character, Naruto he wasn't fight. he wasn't getting beaten that much up until that point. Yeah, Naruto so, versus Neji. Neji was putting that was one of the best Naruto. fights ever. That was one of yeah. the best fights ever. Yeah, I actually have a question related to that. So, you know, Neji, he's a he's a character from the series with a tragic backstory, right? Um, right. His clan was split between the main branch and the side branch, and so the side branch, Neji being a part of, was sort of ostracized from taking part of all the yeah. benefits of being the, the main branch. So he was a little bit, you know, bitter about that too, yeah. where he developed his Had philosophy. chip on of, his shoulder. Exactly. So basically his philosophy was no matter what, you are basically tied to your destiny. So you can't change it. You can't escape it. In his case, you're stuck to your destiny until he met Naruto, who was able to show him as you know, you can actually forge your own destiny, right? Right. So believe it. Basically, I'm wondering is how do you feel about, you know, just that particular aspect of Neji? And how do you think that could pertain to us in real life? I think the fact that it's such a great uh, growth sequence, I guess, is, is a way to put it. You really get to... um take a journey with a person who has to take a look at himself and then has some personal growth as silly as that is to say you you can relate to it or you learn something from it or you you see him forced to have to go through it mm -hmm. right His character right, like... development in naruto between the character development in naruto shippuden how do you feel about that like the characters taking more of a that a back. Seat that's the whole scene. journey. That oh, I don't know. I mean, it. On one hand, I'm like, look, I had this job. They kept calling for like 13 years. You know, I so it, yeah. I never even thought about that uh, taking the back seat. Even though I I do see what you're saying, uh, but I did. I just always felt like I was right there in it. Sasuke in the darkness, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I was just having fun at all those times. I was not, um, I was only looking at it from Neji's point of view. Does that make any sense? No, nah, that makes perfect yeah, right. sense because you voice Neji in the video games, movies, the all television, of see all of it. Now I want to ask you a question. Bombs. Yeah, I don't I don't know if you've seen the controversy on Twitter with um Bandai going under fire about their new game that was released, Storm Connections. But a lot of people, even IGN, are claiming that they used AI 
um, generated voices for the new Storm Connection game. And you can actually hear it. And, you know, a lot of people are not supporting the game. People are not going out to buy it. You know, the voice actors are getting their legal teams involved. How do you oh. feel about it, um, you know, that and, you know, the SAG strikes and things like that? Did that affect you in any way? It, uh, in one aspect of my career, the jobs that I would have that are theatrical voiceover jobs that work that one particular contract that we were striking against. Um, but since there were no other strikes against any of the other contracts, like the dubbing contract, uh, we were still working. Um, number one. Number two, as a director, I'm talking about, and then I'm not under a union guidelines for working on shows with union actors. Um, I don't know about what, anything about the controversy that you're talking about, but of course, um, uh, AI is obviously a, a area that needs to be addressed and kept an eye on, right? Because that, I mean, I don't, I hope that they get a, a good outcome, but I'm glad that the SAG went on strike. I'm all for labor saying "fuck you" <laughs> right. in, in any context. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad that we went on strike and that we were successful. So, my question pertains to Neji and Toshiro as characters okay. because they're viewed as prodigies within their own series, right? Um, you know, Toshiro being uh -huh. the youngest captain, yeah. and then also Neji being just the genius of the Hyuga clan. Yeah. How do you tap into that sort of archetype as far as a character? And do you kind of relate to that in some aspects of your life of being like a prodigy or anything like that? Well, I don't know about being a prodigy, but they, it, it is fun to reflect on those similarities, you know? Yeah. And they are similar uh, in their way. Um well, now you got me thinking about that. I can't remember what your question was. Well, basically, like, how do you tap into someone who's perceived as a genius? Because I know there uh, has to be some sort of like, um, you know. Well, that's where it comes down to having studied acting. As simple mm -hmm. of an answer as that is, right? You take in this information. You figure out how to filter it through yourself, whatever your process is understand what this guy's thinking and feeling and what it's about and what it's about for him and then what it's about for me in order to to connect to it and then addressing the truth of the moment by saying the line in that right. moment more than um the arc of the story or whatever so okay. it's that understanding acting class <laughs> is yeah. how i connect to that and then your technique is there and you show up because at work, there's no one – I don't want to say no one helping you. Of course, you've got the director and everything, but it's time to work. It's time to get busy. So you have to already be good when you come to work. And so that's where all that preparation comes into play where I can look at that line, memorize it, watch the preview, figure out uh, how that connects to the Neji that I know and understand, what he's feeling in this moment. She explains it, and then you deliver it a few different ways with help from the director. And that's it. And then it gets put together as a cartoon, which you then experience as a full for years, yes. <laughs> story, right? This full resounding right. story. And the my experience is different, and I'm drawing on different things in order to do my part in the collaboration that is any uh, artistic um performance related medium. Because you've done these voice lines and you know you you tap into you know, characters through your preparation, through your experience. Um, and I'm no, I'm no, you've said thousands and thousands of lines. Is there like a particular quote from a character that like resonates with you or sticks with you from like any of the characters you've played? I did play Frodo in a, in one version of a Lord of the Rings video, video game. game, but not the movie. Mm -hmm. has something having to do with the Tolkien estate. And I in the trailer and all the jobs, I got to say, I will take the ring, although I do not know the way, which isn't really what you're asking, but I was just so psyched that I got to say that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, that there's that. But if you mean quotes like... Um, uh, just like the because you called favorite, me a genius, yeah. those things stand out. Yes, um, yes, yes. That was a good one. I do love just... 
what what a snob Neji always was. <laughs> that was so fun. <laughs> You're definitely arrogant. Yes. Yeah, it's, that's the fun of doing acting, right? You get to be be that way on purpose, really commit to it, and and uh, but you don't have to be that way in your real life. Yeah, exactly. Do you feel like any of the characters allowed you to be yourself? Like you were like, hey, this is me. Like this is actually me, and I could just be myself through this. I character. don't know, M- Moon Doggy on Noireka Seven, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing that you're playing Neji and Naruto is known to be one of the best animes of all time. Um, how does it feel knowing that you you took place in one of those animes? Like, yeah, that it's be so exciting, especially because while we were doing Naruto, maybe it was because media is different, right? It's a whole new world now. But I don't remember there being as much buzz around it. I was also busier then doing lots of different acting jobs. So I, I have to admit, you know, if I did looping in the morning on a TV show and then I had to get to a two o'clock Naruto in Burbank, you know, again, my experience of it is, is coming from a completely different place. And uh, it's only in the last like four years where I feel Naruto is bigger than ever. And so yeah, it's I think really it like, was wow. COVID. I think the res- you know, with COVID. Yes, I agree with you. It, it put a lot of people onto the anime genre, and then it made a lot of a new fan base. And with Naruto hitting his twenty five year um anniversary, and conventions being a thing now, like conventions are the most popular thing nowadays. Everybody's That's what trying I was gonna to say. Go to- I hear everybody at conventions, and I ask people, you know, did you start watching Naruto at midnight on uh Ado- Toonami? Or did you watch it? And enough people say COVID. They straight up say COVID. Yeah, I was, I was introduced to it on Netflix during that era, and that's how I got into oh, it. Oh, okay. So I'm so, new to the anime culture yeah, myself. Yeah, because the OGs but... bought um bought DVDs, or they had to stay up till midnight and and uh, sneak out and watch TV. Yeah, or this... whatever time it played in your time zone. I first yeah, saw Naruto and... on um. Cartoon Network in about 2011, something around yeah, that time. That would be what I'm talking about, I think. Yeah. No, oh, geez, first time seen Naruto, don't, don't shoot me in the chat, but, you know, it was like just a couple <laughs> of years ago that I didn't know the difference between a cartoon and an anime. So, you know, getting introduced to Naruto being my gateway, wow, okay. I started to learn the culture. And I started to get more. Naruto was like the gateway because it's so easy because the storyline is so captivating. You want to know what happens so next. Yeah, you yeah, want to know what happens. always on a cliffhanger. So yep. no, Nobody does cliffhangers like anime. Even when I'm preparing for my directing and I'm watching the show and I want to keep it simple and right in my mind, and then I get to the end of it and I'm like, oh my god, I have to go on and see what <laughs> happens next. Even though I would rather watch it closer to working so that I have the you get it, but I have to go on because they do cliffhangers so well. So, um, What's your top three anime? Of uh, for in anything or that I've done all time. That's something all that time. we ask all our guests. We ask all our. Uh, well, guests. it'll be animes that I've been in, but I would say for all different reasons, Naruto and Bleach one two, and then my favorite of that I've been in Heat Guy J. Heat Guy J. What was so good about Heat Guy J? Tell us a little about it. I loved Why the way it looked. I don't even really remember what the story was, but I remember <laughs> that I was the it's young just up hero. There you was in it. <laughs> Bob Pappenbrook <laughs> played this older robot, and the exteriors and the cityscapes and this future futuristic look it had. I just really loved that. So Heat Guy J, there you go. It's also a just a certain number of episodes. Licorice Recoil and Heat Guy J. Is there a reason why you picked Naruto over Bleach? Because Toshiro is actually he's actually um a really nice captain in Bleach. And I like his ability. He Ooh. uses what is Zanpato. Uh, you know, you how do you choose between Naruto and Bleach for me personally? And then again, 
in my life, those happened at the same studio. So I drove to the same place. They, they were all happening at the same time. So they, they're they connected for me, really. Yeah, you, in my, again, you, huh? in my experience, they were happening or have one Naruto and a Bleach in the same day or two days in a row, or, along with all the other voiceovers I was doing, like I said, and my auditions at my agent's office and all the other things you do when you're, uh, I guess, a voice actor because there's a lot of ways to get hired to make money. And so if you're busy and running around, doing a two hour anime session in the morning when you've got a uh, TV session on a, on a, you know, hour long in the afternoon, there's a lot running through your head. Mostly. Am I going to be late to my next job? (laughs) Yeah. So um, when you're at conventions, do people come up to you be like, Hey, I I hear Neji. Oh, I I hear Toshiro. Yes. Me, (laughs) me right now. I hear Toshiro more than Neji. And but when you're when you were talking to Flea, yeah, I heard more of Neji, like I heard some of Neji in there, but I hear more of Toshiro. I like, I would I would agree with that. When I listen, especially to uh, older stuff, and I guess by that I mean eh, earlier seasons of Bleach. I'm like, oh, I see what I was doing there, or you know what Wendy was having me do, and. Um, so I would agree in terms of the way that it sounds because Neji, you know, it's all serious. Yeah, I heard ass. it right there. I heard it. I heard Neji right there. That's, that's what he's about. Whereas Toshiro gets to have the wrong Giku moments that Neji never has. Except if you watch the series, uh, Rock Lee and his Ninja pals, you do get to see Neji have all the emotional reactions you want him to have because it's the, I guess the chibi version, right. Of, naruto and a kid little kids but it's hysterical watching neji freak out all the time over the stupid things that rock lee does but in a comical way we actually just had um brian donovan and danielle judovich on this show all right yeah they you know they they was talking about you know how they really didn't get to do no conventions, you know, all together, like the team Mike guy or team. So, you know, cause Danielle said she didn't do much conventions, you know, back then she's just starting to do them now. Do y'all she see is because uh, we were uh, all, you know, we're all friends, right? I see her socially a lot. Actually, we were all being like, you should come out. People want to see, they want to meet 10, 10. <laughs> do you see yourself like reuniting at a convention in the near future? Yes, I have, and I got nothing on the books, but I think a lot of places are out to have as many Naruto people at the same time as possible. And of course, then there'd be the brass ring of getting, starting with Miley and down the list as many as you can get. You know what I mean? Uh, that would be the a, a convention hit, and it would be fun to participate in that. But, you know, that's hard to have that kind of thing come together. I'm sure all of us want that. You got any uh, but wouldn't that be cool? coming up that you want to let the people know about? The the stuff I have on the books is not until uh, next year, uh, May. And so I can't recall mm-hmm. if it was closer and we had something to hit, I would. But I do have something in May. <laughs> and a couple of things are penciled in earlier or i'd speak to them but thank you for giving me the opportunity because it's fun so fun to go out and meet everybody do you and, have a you know, favorite take a trip. comic-con i mean like a convention moment like a like you went out and you felt the genuine love from the fans or a fan just made your day by coming up to you with like a well i feel the you way you expect. just described i feel that all the time but i I got some, I get some sweet gifts from people that are really beautiful. A guy made me a Hyoden Maru, 3D printed Hyoden Maru. I have kids who do drawings and give me the drawings. And I have a folder. In fact, I bring it with me to conventions. And I'm like, look at this drawing that the other kid did. And those kinds of things. Great, great moments. Especially because when 10 year olds come up and they're excited about Naruto, that means they're brand new fans. Mm-hmm. They didn't watch it awesome. 14 years ago. They're watching it on on Netflix. And so it's a whole new, a whole other round. 
So just for like anyone who's interested in doing similar work to you, what's like uh -huh. a piece of advice that you can give to someone who wants to pursue um voice acting? Uh take acting class. Be an actor. Uh not don't you can't think of voice acting as its own thing. I mean, obviously it is, but what it really is is a version of acting. And that's what the skill is for and yes there's creating characters and doing voices but you're you're creating characters just like you would for the theater it's just that the only thing that's being utilized is your voice right you still got to go in and and do the acting work so the first thing you got to do is get good enough that when you start putting yourself out there people go mm -hmm. "Ooh, look at her you know people take yeah. notice of the talent and the preparation so do not think of it as just voice acting. Think of it as acting. Acting. Do plays. Yeah. Be in people's right. movies that they're making down the street, you know? Go to do community theater. I mean it. The people that I know who are working are, are actors, are singers, and um, people who uh, perform. I'm not saying that you can't become a successful voice actor with intent to come into the industry and become a sex successful voice actor um either you that can absolutely happen but keep your eye on the prize and understand that it's about uh art <laughs> you're right, an artist right. thank you so much steve for coming on the show let the people know where they can find you at on social media yeah sure i think um, my uh instagram is just steve staley and i love interacting with people there Twitter people reach out to me and I reach out back, but I don't do anything interesting on Twitter except uh, regurgitate politics. It's my little area where I get to voice uh, off. Um, uh, but Instagram is great. People say, uh, post great pictures and tag me all the time. Well, I get tagged a lot on Twitter too. There's a, a great pe people announcing their wins and cool stuff on, on Twitter. Steve, what the hell is my Twitter handle? Just type in Steve Staley. No way. We'll, put it, we'll, we'll definitely <laughs> put it in the description below. So people can just click on the link, go right over there. Thank you so much for coming through. It was an honor talking to you. Wow. Definitely. What a good well, one. Thanks, guys. All our heroes out there, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more interviews. We got a gang of interviews coming up. So stay tuned to the channel because you don't want to miss your favorite hero or villain right here <laughs> on the Voice of the Hero I podcast. love it. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> yes sir. Have a good yes. one. And until next time, it's the Voice of the Heroes podcast. Byakugan. Sing it with me, pretty Kelly.